welcome to Business Talk Sister Crack. I'm Becca. And I'm Ruthie. And today's episode title is What You Need to Know About Business, Debit, and Credit Cards. And with us today, we have uh, an expert, I would say, on this because she's been a business consultant for a super long time, has started her own nonprofit, has worked with so many different uh, small, medium-sized, large businesses, uh, Julie George, and she's going to be talking with us today. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me, ladies. Yeah, and just some context. I know some people, their favorite episode is the chicken nugget bracelet episode where we, I can't even remember what episode number it is, but at the end, we talked about when I had this brilliant idea to make a chicken nugget bracelet. And Julie George was the one who really tried to um, put <laughs> wheels on that <laughs> and get, like, get me going. It's really a good idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, she was like trying to get me all hyped up on writing a business plan for it. And I was like, yeah, yeah. And then it just didn't end up panning out because she was like, FDA regulations. And I was like, like that's really hard. <laughs> Anyways, but thank sometimes you so I have much. to be a thank you, thank you. Yeah, sometimes I have to be a, a an idea squasher just so that we can put our time and effort into something that that may be a little bit more lucrative. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> you know, you can, you can only love so many things until they don't make any money, right? <laughs> yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. So we'll just jump into kind of our first question with you, um, which is what do you do? So uh, currently right now, I am an account executive for a financial tech company called Bento for Business. Uh, and we help small businesses with their uh, with the spend management platform in being able to create your own debit cards at, at will and also be able to control how when and where uh, your company funds are being spent. Um, right. And so I get to work very closely with a lot of small businesses with their cash flow management. Yeah, and I am super excited about this because Ruthie and I, we talk a lot about the difference between um, debit versus credit and all that kind of stuff. And so I would love to hear your perspective on this for those things. What are the pros and cons of debit and credit cards? Well, first, I want to kind of just give a brief overview just so that all of our listeners are aware of, of the differences between debit and credit, because sometimes, you know, that that can vary. And so although credit and debit cards typically look almost identical, um, a lot of things do differ, differ with credit and debit um, and both really make it convenient to make purchases in stores, online. But the big difference is that debit um, is really going to be a budget setter for you. You're not going to be able to overspend. And so that kind of brings me right into our pros and cons. So the big pro of a debit card is that um, it can help with budgeting. Again, we're going to fund our account versus using um a short-term loan like credit is. Debit cards are also going to be really convenient and widely accepted because it is a cash-based uh, method. Mm. Um, another, yeah, so that's that's a big thing because uh, some businesses, as we can tell, especially for those small, small businesses, uh, merchant fees can be a huge issue. And mm -hmm. so debit uh, eliminates a lot of that and, and cuts down the fees for the merchant. So a lot of uh, small businesses would prefer to not take credit cards on uh, in that in that instance. Mm -hmm. um, another pro for debit cards is that you're not going to have any annual fees. A lot of business uh, credit cards do charge uh, annual fees to participate in their rewards programs, different loyalty things, um, and some of their services. And, and debit cards uh, typically are not going to have annual fees uh, attached to them. Uh, and I would say probably the last and most important is that debit uh, is interest free. Uh, and so that can be uh, a huge deal breaker when we are on a very, very tight budget as a small business grows. Uh, some of those interest and those un, um, I would say the unstructured expenses, those kind of oopsies, those can really, um, those can really hurt your cash flow management and put you behind uh, month after month. So just something to think about that uh, with the pros of uh, debit cards. Yeah. So when you're like a small business and you're trying to scale, um, which one do you think would be best to be using and how do you decide what's going to be the right fit for a small business? That is an, uh, that's a great, great question. And so I'm going to just, from my experience, um, both as a business owner and advisor, 
um, consultant, you know, I recommend businesses use a combination of both credit and debit cards. Mm. The reason being is that, you know, again, we want as small business owners to be able to have a variety of tools in our toolbox, whether that's financial and uh, human resources, things like that. Um, and so it can't hurt to have both. Um, but we have to know when is the right time to use those. And so credit cards are great for large purchases and, you know, maybe even reoccurring payments that you know that you already have to pay and that you've allocated a budget for. Um, that can be nice because you can set that on a recurring, you know, gather some points, some rewards mm -hmm. um, and helping with some short term loans, because we do know that things pop up as a business owner and we do need access to a quick credit line. And that can be um, a great solution for a business owner is to get a, a, a business credit card. Um, well, on the other hand, um, you know, debit cards are great to manage the unstructured spending that happens within your business. Because again, when we start to have employees, we start growing a little bit and scaling, we have to give access uh, to funds to our employees um, and being able to really nail down how much they can spend, where they can spend it debit cards are a better option for that. Because again, we can fund account, uh, fund those debit cards, and then the money's taken off versus at the end of the month going, how much did we spend? Um, and so that's where I, I agree, you know, the combination of both of those is good to have in your back pocket. Okay. So then when you're a small business and you're wanting to kind of make this blend of a couple different mm -hmm. cards and stuff, what would be a good credit card? What attributes are good to have in a credit card? Yeah, so a couple of good things that you want to start to ask yourself when looking for a credit card is, um, are you getting a, credit, a business credit card to build business credit? I mean, that's a big thing. So we want to look at what credit cards are best for that. And again, if we don't have any business credit um, and we're a new business, we have to start with certain credit cards that maybe um, work with us to build that business credit score. Mm -hmm. So we have to look at that factor. Um, another factor you want to look at is, do you travel a lot? Mm -hmm. um, certain cards are better for uh, certain travel expenses, um, different airlines, you can get different rewards with different credit cards. And so we really want to maximize if we are paying interest and fees, um, where, where our money is going, you know, as far as those loyalty and rewards points and Again, if we're traveling, you know, we know that we're using, you know, for example, Delta all the time. Delta uses, you know, the American Express card. So we're going to want to have that so we can get all those extra, you know, free baggage um, claims. Another thing you're going to want to look for is, are you getting cash back rewards? Um, if that's something important to you, there are a lot of different programs. Again, some of those with larger cash back rewards are going to charge you annual fees. And so we have to uh, make sure that we are putting that into our budget as well. And then again, when you're starting off and looking for a business credit card, there's a lot of credit cards out there that are going to uh, provide 0% interest for an uh, introductory period. And so we're going to want to maximize, you know, that short-term loan, loan and getting interest-free for as long as possible, especially if we're going to make a large purchase. And so those are kind of the four questions I think about when I'm looking at a business credit card and then answering those and finding a credit card that, that fits those answers. Yeah, that's really good. Um, and I think like, I think that's really helpful for people to think about, even like you had said specifically with the traveling, I was like, Oh yeah, mm -hmm. that's good. <laughs> yep. 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 It's those, it's those little things for small businesses that, you know, again, if we can maximize, it's a huge, huge benefit in the long term. Yeah. Um, just really setting that up. And that's again, where I come back to like a good business plan and thinking this all through, mm -hmm. you can't think through enough of these details. And you're like, Oh, I wouldn't have thought that I had to think through my credit card and yeah. who my credit card's for, because that could end up really saving me a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. that's why it's nice to have a lot of people looking at those plans and, and mm -hmm. why it's nice to talk, talk and have a podcast like this to just get a different perspective. Yeah. When you kind of have more employees and stuff, how does that start getting complicated when you have um, like this business credit card or debit cards or things like that? Yeah. So I think the biggest thing, you know, when we're, we're growing is employee trust. Again, credit, you're giving your, your employee a lot of trust that 
they're going to make purchases per your uh, reimbursement plan, uh, your policy, um, that they're not using that credit card for their own um, for their own benefit. And so again, that that's a tough, tough switch for a business owner to finally start um, ordering cards for their employees because again, they're all on their business credit score. And so an employee can really um, overspend because again, we're not working on a budget, we're working on a credit limit, which could far exceed um, what that cash flow for that business was for the month. So again, it, it really hurt, it really, um, it can really be a hassle um, managing that employee spending in real time and having visibility into their purchases um, with those credit cards. And that's why debit sometimes can be a preferred method for when we're letting our employees spend. It's great to have a business, you know, an owner credit card. Um, Cause again, the owner has complete authority, knows what they wanna spend on, what they don't. Um, and so debit can be a great option uh, for that because it really streamlines and you know exactly where they're being, uh, where the money is being spent and how much. Um, and we're not finding out at the end of the month when we get the credit card statement. Yeah. So one of the things I had a question about, which is um, mm -hmm. off, a little off topic, but do some people use a business credit card like they would a debit card where they just like say, well, this is how much we're only going to spend on this, but we'll pay it off every single month. So we don't have to worry about those fees and stuff. Uh, yes, that, that, you know, I think that's everyone's hope <laughs> is that that happens. Um, but again, when we're, you know, when you can swipe that credit card and our, <laughs> our limit's $10,000 and we only want to spend five this month, it's really easy to just go ding, 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 and kind of forget in real time because, mm. oh yeah, I had this running tally in my head or, oh, you know, I forgot to give my, you know, manager that receipt. And so we think that we have more money, you know, to spend than we really do. And so that's where a lot of people get into trouble. A lot of businesses get into mm. trouble is that it's these, oh, well, I thought, oh, well, I didn't know. <laughs> It's, oh, well, I'll, next time I'll do that. And then it's on the responsibility of the accountant, bookkeeper, owner to, um, to, to just make sure that their uh, expense policy is being uh, actually followed. And so mm -hmm. that can, again, lead to a lot of trust issues. And when we don't have employee trust and um, a lot of things start to go downhill um, in the business um, when an employee feels or a business owner feels that there's a little bit of this mis mismanagement, mistrust there. So, yeah. 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 So what recommendations do you have on creating accountability for what a business spends? Specifically when you were mentioning like that trust piece and stuff, because I feel like accountability is such a huge piece of that. Yeah. And so, you know, in today's world, technology. How do we use technology to work smarter, not harder? That's always been my motto. Um, and that's really why I got into this, this, this new role that I'm in, because you're able now through some technology platforms to put expense policies directly on your card. Hmm. And so a human does not have to manage it. The employee does not have to manage it. The computer can. And the computer can say yes and no. It doesn't have to be your boss. It doesn't have to be like, oh, well, this time I'll be nice. And you have that human element of, you know, guilt uh, that comes in. The computer says you can spend this. You can spend it on this, this, and this. Uh, you can now have merchant codes and categories. So you can make specific fuel cards, gas cards, um, utility cards, things of that nature. Uh, so it, you know, again, let's, let's have technology work for us and be, be the, the bearer of bad news to the employee that, Hey, we we're over budget. Nope. There's no more funds left. Um, and so prepaying and, and the debit model really helps with that because again, we can fund that account automatically with $5,000 every month. And we know where, when, and how our employees are going to spend that because we've limited that, uh, within the expense policy in the program. 
Wow. That's so neat. Um, like just the, I love that when you said like the, cause that, I think that made it all click for me when you were explaining it to, us, it to us before, like the merchant codes, like of people not being able to use a certain debit card on alcohol because the merchant code is different than gas. And so if they have this like employee card then they can only use it for gas. <laughs> and I thought that was really fancy. Yeah. I'm like, wow. It is. And look at that. Well, and, and we can even tailor it down to, Hey, we only want this card to be used at pay at the pumps versus going in so that they can't buy items inside the store. Mm -hmm. Um, and again, I think a big thing with businesses that we lose track of with, uh, any purchase is receipts. Mm -hmm. What do we do with these receipts? Well, we need these receipts, you know, credit (laughs) card or debit or whatnot. Um, and so a lot of these expense, you know, platforms, you know, such as Bento will allow for some receipt management. Um, finally, again, let's use some technology. We all have a smartphone in our, our back pocket. I don't know very many people or businesses that don't have access to, um, some type of smartphone to be able to, to manage this stuff. So we don't have to have this paper trail anymore or go, Oh, I don't know what happened to that. Or my dog ate it or I washed it. Um, and then, you know, again, in the event that you get audited, you know, that's, those are the times you need those receipts and you're really wishing that the dog didn't eat it. So, um, (laughs) that's where I go. How can we prepare, you know, for a worst case scenario? And it is using technology now that's, that's, um, a lot of businesses, you know, again, that's how we're, we're getting smart and we're being able to be more purposeful about how we, we manage our funds is through technology. Yeah. Okay. So you had mentioned something before and I thought this was super interesting and it was kind of like around the, why you have to be aware of what you buy online. Um, and this was kind of more focused on like certain things. Like, I think you were talking more about use tax, uh, or sale sales and use tax that some companies online weren't charging it and trying to collect all of those specific ones for your business is a big deal. And could you explain that? Because I think, I think that's a really good tool for business owners to understand about both credit and debit cards when they're making online purchases. Yeah, absolutely. And I think we, we forget how, um, tax works, you know, and since credit cards are a convenient manner, um, to make online purchases, the purchases often do not reflect the appropriate, uh, sales or use tax. Um, Hmm. and you're going to go, well, why? Um, and so it says, you know, basically what happens is if an online retailer does not have a physical presence in your state, that business may not be required to register and collect your sales tax for your state, but you still owe it. And so that's where we get into this catch 22 with using credit cards, um, for that, because again, we don't know when we're looking at, and we're being audited, you know, maybe a year later, um, oh, well what was that purchase used for? Cause all we have is a credit card statement. Um, and that's where, uh, having a spend management platform of some sort in your toolbox, um, will help eliminate that because again, we'll know exactly, um, we'll be able to, to, to really take those purchases out, figure out where, um, taxes do and be able to see so that we know we're not having to sift through years and years of credit card and receipt purchases. Um, and so, you know, again, it, it, it's just one of these things that can really derail a business very quickly when you have to put bandwidth into an audit, when you have to put Mm -hmm. funds into an audit, when you have to pay large fines or fees associated with audits, because you haven't paid the correct sales tax in use. And I can tell you that in you know, my years as a consultant, um, I handheld um, handfuls of businesses doing this exact same thing. Mm-hmm. And it, it having to find loans on how we're going to pay these sales taxes, because again, they're not just going to go back one year, they're going to go way back, and they're going to dig up every credit card purchase. And these, these audits, they will find every penny that you have not paid. And um, again, mm-hmm. when you're slapped with tens of thousands of dollars in sales tax that you haven't paid over the years. Um, Again, that can really, really, really hinder a business. Um, And I can tell you specifically one business went out, uh, went out of business because of it. Uh, They just did not have Hmm. the funds to be able to, to pay it. And unfortunately the IRS is like, 
we don't care. <laughs> you owe us this. Yeah. So um, mm -hmm. that's where, again, the visibility into purchases can be a big thing. Um, in credit cards, we just think, oh, Amazon and this. Well, Amazon, um, again, we're not paying a lot of sales and use taxes with Amazon purchases. So if you're using your business Amazon account for your home stuff, it, it you could start paying, again, a lot of tax on um uh, on purchases that were intended for personal versus business and the other way around. So again, the debit, the debit model is nice for that because we have a lot more visibility into these purchases with, with mm -hmm. the spend management platform. Okay. So thank you so much for sharing that with us too. Cause uh, for me, that was just a little bit of a nerdy thing. Like, Oh, sales and use tax. Like I know about this and that's crazy. But, and I know that, um, you got or at Bento, there's a lot of stuff there that um, is an all in one solution for that. And so when you originally gave us uh, when we were talking just about your new job and everything, I was like, Oh, this is such a cool thing. Yeah. Um, so why don't you tell us a little bit about where people can find you. And then also too, I hear that you have some really cool freebie for us or something. So I want to hear about that too. Yes, yes, yes. So you know, again, thanks for having me again. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn. Um, I can also be reached uh, on email, julie.george at bentoforbusiness.com. Um, always willing to take a business question or two, um, even if it doesn't relate to financial. So love being a business advisor. Um, and because also I work for Bento and Bento is passionate about helping businesses grow, uh, we wanted to extend our free trial for our platform um, and give an additional two months free to the listeners of uh, business talk sister doc mm -hmm. um and so if you use the promo code sister Gok, um we'll give you an additional we'll give you four months for free on our platform to try it out to make sure that um it's a tool that uh works for you again we're here to help businesses grow um and i'm julie george Wow, we have our own uh, promo code. That's so exciting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I was literally like when we were talking about, oh, you could literally just like do enough money for one purchase on one uh, debit card and that's it. So then like there's no like reoccurring, oh, and you subscribe to this and you have no idea or whatever. I was like, I just had that happen this week. And I was like, I never, I never subscribed to a long-term thing. Like, I don't know why you're charging me all yep. this money. And it was just like, wow, that's so true. Like it eliminates so many headaches when you can just create cards and take them off whenever you want. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know. Absolutely. It's like, you know, again, that's, that's why I like Bento because for a business owner to be able to try with no contract, no hidden fees, no nothing to be able to try it out, to see that it works because if it does great. And if it doesn't, let's find you something that does. Yeah. And well, we have a cool friend that works for them. Da -da. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, okay. We're going to talk a little bit about this gawk that we had today, our transition yeah. to gawk. And Julie, you had a story for us. Yeah. About I do. I do. Was it your first interview? <laughs> it was my first professional interview. So okay. I have a background where I owned a landscaping business, so I didn't have to get dressed up for that job. Um, I was the owner. So when I finally switched into my professional career, my first interview, it's very embarrassing. Uh, my, my pants were not hemmed correctly. And I actually had to use duct tape um, and walked into that interview with duct tape hemming my pants up. Um, and thank goodness it stuck because I ended up getting the job and I'm not <laughs> sure I would have had that duct tape release. So a little plug for duct tape there. <laughs> we unfortunately don't have a promo code for duct tape, but I yeah, unfortunately not. <laughs> yeah. I remember um one of the interviews that I just had, yeah, just ended up uh, my mom came in as I was <laughs> this was like when I was little living at home and it was my first big kid job and and then my mom came in and opened the door and was like, Are these underwear yours? <laughs> I was like <laughs> not, not a good time. <laughs> Not a good time. <laughs> and of I course, think, I'm on the phone. And I'm like, just, just go good. <laughs> well, and I think now, I think now through COVID and all the Zoom meetings we've had, I think we've all had at least one of those. Like, oh Awkward no, moment. they just popped in on that moment. <laughs> uh, yeah, 
Yeah. Well, um, thank you so much, Julie, for being here with yes. us this week. If you guys mm-hmm. um, enjoyed listening about all these different business options that you can have for uh, debit cards or credit cards, we have learned uh, so much from Julie just in general, um, but also specifically on this topic. So uh, definitely reach out to her if you have any other questions or reach out to us um, and we can get you the answers. Uh, follow us on Instagram and we will see you again next week.